Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Hashem Ali Khan. So in this video, I'm going to explain you about the comparative balance sheets. First of all, we'll do one problem on comparative income statement and then one problem on comparative balance sheet. So already I have completed nine problems on this financial statement analysis and interpretation. So before starting the 10th problem, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. Always keep it ready. Take the screenshot of the solutions of 10th and 11th problem. Then I'll explain in detail regarding the comparative income statement and comparative balance sheet. Come on, see the 10th problem. <clears throat> the income statement of Gautam Limited are given for the years 2016 and 2017. Prepare comparative statement, analyze and interpret the significance of changes in these statements. So two statements are given. That is uh, the data regarding income statement for 2016 and 2017. The last year is 16, current year is 17. We are given the data regarding sales, minus sales return. The net sales, less cost of goods sold, gross profit, administrative and general expense, selling expense, net operating profit, interest on loan, net profit before tax, less corporate tax, net profit after tax. So we are given the values of all these variables for last year 2016 and current year 2017. Now see the solution carefully. Gautam Limited comparative income statement for the year 16-17. So total five columns, first column particulars. Then last year 2016, current year 2017, absolute change and percentage change. This is the format for making comparative income statement. First of all, we will take the sales. First of all, we will take all the values of last year and current year. Don't write anything in absolute change and percentage change. First, we try to understand how to make the format. From sales, deduct discount and sales return will get the net sales. From net sales, deduct cost of goods sold, we'll get the gross profit. Now from gross profit, we have to deduct operating expenses. Two operating expenses are given, administrative and general expense, selling expense. These two are called operating expenses. Take the total and denote it as B. A is the gross profit, B is the operating expenses. Now A minus B, gross profit minus operating expenses will get operating profit. So here you can see operating profit A minus B 280,000 minus 210,000 70,000. Similarly 370 minus 250 120. From operating profit deduct non-operating expenses. The non-operating expenses are interest, interest on loan. So deduct interest on loan will get profit before tax. From profit before tax deduct corporate tax will get profit after tax. This is the format we have to make for making comparative analysis, right? Now all the values are given in the problem. Carefully take all the values for 2016 and 2017. Absolute change, the formula for absolute change, current year minus last year. So current year is 2016, last year is 20, uh, current year is 2017, last year is 2016. So subtract 10 lakh minus 7 lakh 25,000. You will get 2,75,000. Now 2,75,000 divided by 7,25,000 into 100. You will get 37.93. So current year minus last year will get absolute change. 15,000 minus 10,000. 5,000 is the absolute change. Now absolute change divided by last year figure. 5,000 divided by 10,000 into 100. You will get 50%. Like this, you have to make all the calculations, calculating absolute change and calculating the percentage change. Now the important part is regarding the interpretation from these changes. What is the final conclusion? So we have to give the conclusion in three, method, uh, three ways. First, we uh, compare the gross profit and sales. Normally what will happen, the rate of gross profit will be equal to the rate of sales. If cost and sales are increasing at the same rate. 
if the cost of goods sold is increasing, COGS is increasing at the same rate, then sales and GP will also increase in the same rate. But here, the net sales have increased by 37.76%. Net sales, not the gross sales. The net sales increased by 37.76, whereas gross profit increased by 32.14. The gross profit is increasing at a lower rate than the rate of increase in sales. The reason? The cost is increasing at a higher rate, that is 41.38. The cost of goods sold is increasing at a higher rate. That's why it is putting pressure on the gross profit. The gross profit is increasing only by 32.14. This is the first interpretation. So here, rate of growth in sales has been less than the rate of cost of goods sold on account of large increase in returns. This has resulted in still lower growth rate of GP, gross profit. The gross profit is increasing at a lower rate because the cost of goods sold is increasing at a higher rate. First conclusion. Second conclusion. The company has managed to keep a tight control on its selling expenses. Administration expense all grow at a fast rate. Now you compare. From gross profit, we are coming to operating profit. The gross profit increased by 32.14%. But operating in profit is increasing by 71.43%. Huge increase in operating profit. The reason? The operating expenses are not increasing at the same rate as GP. The operating expenses are increasing only by 19%. The gross profit is increasing by 32%. Whereas operating expenses are increasing only by 19%. This will give more profit. So operating profit is increasing at a higher rate, 71.43, right? Operating expense have been shown a tolerable increase. This led to a sizable jump in the operating profit. Operating profit has increased at a sizable jump. There has been a fall in the amount of interest. Interest, interest on loan last year 20,000, current year 15,000. There is decrease in the interest on loan by 5,000. So percentage term, 25% is the in decrease in the interest. Non-operating expenses have decreased. This led to a phenomenal rise in net profit. So net profit has increased by 110%. Operating profit increased by 71%. Whereas profit before tax is increasing by 110%. The reason is the interest has come down. There is decrease in the interest on loan. Growth is paid. Growth in tax paid has matched with the growth in profit. Profit increased by 110%. The uh, income tax has also increased by 100%. That means the rate of tax is matching with the increase in profit. The overall financial position of the company is satisfactory. Now if we compare 16 and 17 income statement, we can say that during the year 2017, the profitability has increased. The company is successful in controlling the expenses. By controlling the expenses, the profitability is increasing. That is the conclusion you have to make. Right? This is the end of problem number 10. Now I am going to start problem number 11. See carefully. From the following information, Prepare comparative balance sheet and comment. So two balance sheets are given. Uh, year not given. So we simply put first year, second year. First year is the last year. Second year is the current year. Now equity reserves, it is given horizontal balance sheet. But horizontal balance sheet is not suitable for analysis. For analysis, we have to make a vertical balance sheet. In vertical balance sheet like this, we have to take all the liabilities First, then assets below that, one below the other, right? Now, equity reserves. This equity and reserves should be taken under shareholders fund. So, comparative balance sheet, first year, second year, absolute change, percentage change. Equity and liabilities, shareholders fund. Share capital and reserves. These two items is denoted as A. Next, non-current liabilities. Here, we are given debentures and long-term loan. So debentures and long-term loan will fall under non-current liabilities. This will be denoted as B. 
Then current liabilities. The current liabilities are bills payable, creditors, outstanding expenses and short term loans. The four items are there under current liabilities. Bills payable, creditors, outstanding expense, short term loan. This we denoted as C. So A is the shareholders fund, B is the non-current liability, C is the current liability. Now total A plus B plus C, A plus B plus C, you will get 2,24,472 last year. And current year 2,20,039. Remember the format how I am making the balance sheet. And this format is very easy for analysis. Right? So we have taken all the values given in the problem. Last first year and second year. Same values I have copied down. Now come to assets. Now assets are again divided into non-current assets and current assets. Non-current assets are fixed assets. Land and building. We are given land and building, furniture, machinery and plant, goodwill. So these four are the non-current. Land and building, furniture, machinery and plant, goodwill. This we denoted as D. Next, current assets. The current assets are bills receivable, cash, data, stock, prepaid expense and bank. So five items are there. Bills receivable, cash, data, stock, prepaid expense, bank. Six items we have under current assets. That's all. Take all the values, whatever is given in the problem. That's all. So first of all, we have filled up first year and second year, whatever values are given. The only thing is format is not given in the problem. You have to remember the format of the balance sheet. Right? So first year, second year, we have taken. As usual, we calculate the absolute change and percentage change. Absolute change, current year value minus last year value. So second year minus first year, 150, 150, no change. 5050 minus 4050, it is 1000. So 1000 divided by 4050 into 100, 24.69. So absolute change divided by last year figure into 100, we'll get the percentage change. Like this, we have to calculate all the percentages. We can see many items are there which shows negative figure. Example, dependence last year 4000, current year nil. So 0 minus 4000 is minus 4000. So minus 4000 divided by 4000 into 100, minus 100 percent. Similarly, 31000 minus 42000, you will get minus 11000. So minus 11000 divided by 42000 into 100, minus 26.19. So all the calculations you make. Now very important part is interpretation, conclusion, solution. For balance sheet comparison, we compare current assets with current liabilities to give the opinion about short term liquidity position. So current assets, you see you can hear, you can see here current assets. The current assets increased by 12.18%. Some current assets are increasing, some current assets are decreasing. The total current assets have increased by 12.18%. Whereas total current liabilities increased by 39.17%. The current liability is increasing by 39%. Whereas current assets increased only by 12%. That means during the current year, the liquidity position is deteriorating. Because current assets are increasing at a small rate. Whereas current liability is increasing at a higher rate. So first conclusion. The increase in current asset is much lower than the increase in current liability. So the short term liquidity position has deteriorated during the current year. The current asset should be more than current liability. But what is happening? Current liability is more than current assets. The short term liquidity position is deteriorating. The current assets increased by only 12% whereas current liability increased by 39%. So the short term liquidity position has deteriorated in the second year. That is the first conclusion. Second, long term loans have come down, but this has been largely financed by short term loans. You can see long term liabilities, non current liabilities. Debentures last year 4000, current year nil. That means debentures were paid off. <clears throat> long term loans 42,000, 31,000. There is decrease by 26%. So debentures decreased by 100%. Whereas long term loans decrease by 26.19%. So overall, there is 32.61% decrease in long term funds. Whereas fixed assets, you can say 
fixed assets have decreased by 6.28%. So fixed assets have decreased as well as long term funds have also been decreased. Now reserves have increased despite being goodwill written off. Reserves you can see last year 4050, current year 5050. The reserves have increased despite that goodwill was written off. You can see here goodwill last year was how much? 12,091 and current year goodwill is 78. That means goodwill was written off during the second year. That's why the goodwill has come down from 12,000 to only 78. So in spite of writing off the goodwill, our reserves have increased. This shows that the profitability has improved during the second year. There is increase in profitability in year two. Thus the profitability is good, but short term solvency position is a matter of concern. So from this analysis, what we can observe that there is decrease in long term funds, decrease in fixed assets. But the matter of concern is short term liquidity position because current liabilities are increasing at a very high rate, whereas current assets are not increasing. Profitability position is good because in spite after writing this uh, goodwill, still the reserves have increased. The overall financial position appears to be satisfactory in year two. Final conclusion is the overall financial position appears to be satisfactory. So this is the end of 11th problem. Totally 11 problems have completed on financial statement analysis, which consists of common size statement, comparative and trend analysis. Inshallah, we'll continue the next two problem in the next video.